for the next few few hours. hours. Nothing Nothing exists exists. except for Cleveland Cleveland High School School Sports sports. because the Quad Quad Brothers are here. Outlaw! What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Quad Brothers Sports Show. My name is Kevin Hanley. Got my peoples in the building with me. Got the homie Eli Robinson. What up? Got the homie Reggie Logan. Yo. Philly Phil is out tonight. Not feeling well. Phil get better. Eli. Yes, sir. Six miles a day, huh? Yeah, six miles. Get Eli Robinson putting in six miles. Cleveland Marathon. Shout out, Eli. No doubt. I finished in like an hour and 55 minutes. Look, man, I know when I go to the gym sometimes, man, I do one mile on the bike, and I'm like, oh, my God, how long have I on, on the treadmill? I'm like, how long have I been on this joint? <laughs> he going to sleep like a baby tonight. Man, listen, <laughs> man, it's raining, too. You might call off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> All right, man, uh, so uh, we'll uh, have a great show tonight. You know how we do, man. We'll talk some NBA. Might get in some NFL as well, some baseball. 7.30, we'll be joined by John Hughley of the Brush Arcs. We'll uh, chop it up with him. Should be a great interview with John. Getting a lot of attention lately. Shout out to the young man. We'll talk to John at 7.30. Deontay Wilder, man, you have to do him like that, bro. That that man, listen, I haven't seen a knockout like that in a minute. I mean, he caught, he caught Buddy straight on the jaw. Wired that jaw. And... <laughs> Caught him straight on the jaw, and that was it. It was over. First round, too. See, that's that right there is why I don't pay for boxing action. Yeah. That's the exact reason right there. How much was that fight last night? Probably $60, $70? Yeah, easy. Easy. And it was over in the first round. Yeah. Dropped him quickly. I would have been sorry about that. Man, listen. <laughs> I still never forget, man. I was I was a youngster, and um, I felt like 13. And my uncle got the Mike Tyson versus Michael Spinks fight back in the day. Right. Actually, I got the footage right here. Yeah? For Wilder? Yeah, he, he caught him. 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 He caught Do you hear? Do you hear the sound? You heard the impact. Yeah. He the, so, the, yeah. the, the impact, man. He caught him. He caught him flush. I mean, that wasn't like a graze, or you know, or like a phantom punch. He caught. You could hear it. He caught him flush on the jaw. And that was it. And it was quick too. Left and hit him with the right. Done, done, data. As they, as they say back in the day, done, data. It's a done deal. You over with? Get him out of here. So Deontay Wilder remains undefeated. Three, three, zero. I'm still rocking with y'all, man. I can't believe CJ going out like this, man. Looking Go- real bleak for him. Looking real bleak, man. <laughs> I mean, what do you expect? It's the Golden State Warriors. I mean, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I get, get it. one. Not, listen, it's get not, one. It's not their time yet. I'm just. I'm. I, I love Portland. Don't get me wrong. I love you know. I don't know if it'll ever be you know, Portland's CJ time, though. and whatever and, and Dame, but it's not their time yet. I You're right. I don't know if it'll ever be. Will it ever be Portland's time? Like who's gonna? Not down. Get you know what I'm saying? Like who's gonna want to come? Who's gonna want to come to Portland? Right. You gotta get somebody else to go with CJ and go with Dame. But the tide might might be changing this summer because if KD leaves, he's and, gone. He's gone and he's goes gone. to New York. I, honestly, man, if I'm K, I'm not going to the Knicks. I'm sorry, unless I know Kyrie is coming, I'm not going to the Knicks. He got to get out of out of Oakland, though. Yeah, it, it's too much. Most definitely, it's too much killing his his image. Uh, you see, they don't need they don't need KD. He just riding the wave. Well, how you the best player in the league, and and they still win when you don't play. I mean that's true, 
it, say what you want about the debate between LeBron and KD, but we see what happens to teams when LeBron's not in there. They don't win. Now, now the Golden State, LeBron's not in there. You still got Draymond. You still got Steph. You still got Clay. You still got Iggy. You still got Andre Livingston. Andre Livingston. I mean, Sean Livingston. Sean Livingston. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruh. I'm, I'm thinking about Iggy and then, yeah. And let's not make no mistake here. It's a reason why Stephen Curry is the two-time MVP. He's just the ultimate team player, and he defers to Kevin Durant. But we see what he do when 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 he got to do what he got to do. I, I just – I don't I, – Unless Toronto get their stuff together. It ain't going to happen. No. I mean, Milwaukee's a team that's just really – I mean, Milwaukee's got a shot. I guess everybody's got a shot. But Portland don't really have a chance in, in this one. Now, Milwaukee, maybe. A slight maybe. Chance. I'm sticking by my early season prediction. that well, I said the Bucks going to win in the championship this year. I'm going to remain by what I said. I, I appreciate that, but <laughs> I just – I don't know, man. I hate to admit it. Because as a Cavs fan, it's always middle finger to the Doves. But, hey, man, that, that team, they're they too good. They are too good. And if Milwaukee don't, doesn't get them, I don't know who I don't know who's going to get them. Because to, it won't be Toronto. Toronto Toronto got nothing coming if they play the Golden State Warriors. That'll be a sweep. They only got, Toronto got one player. They got Kawhi Leonard, and that's yeah, it. And that's it. Kyle Lowry disappears. In it's the pl- garbage, man. They said the Lakers trying to get Kyle Lowry oh, too. Oh God, why? They say why? they want, they trying to get Kyle Lowry to uh, play with LeBron and uh, who's LeBron. That? Like, man, I don't want that dude. I want that bum over in the squad. I beat him what three times in the playoffs. Why would I want Ky- him? On Kyle my team? Lowry and Bradley Beal. Those are two guys they trying to go after. What to play with LeBron? I don't know about Bradley. Who, okay. who else want to go to LA? Uh, look, LA is a mess. But but but, but, uh, but they got their fourth pick. And let's just talk about the draft. Do we gotta get into this? Right? <laughs> I mean, look, you you know what I say, man. It's not where you pick, it's who you pick. Right? Yeah. Like think of some of the guys that, that weren't top three, top five picks. I, I can name you a few uh five fifth pick dra- in the in the draft, uh Kev. Dwayne Wade was number Dwayne fifth Wade. in the draft. Okay. Uh Kevin Garnett was yep. number fifth in the draft. Uh it was another one out there. I can't think of it right now, but I know for Dame sure. Dame was picked six. I think Steph was picked seventh or ninth. Donovan Mitchell was picked thirteenth. Jimmy Butler was picked thirtieth. So it's it's not where you pick; it's who you pick. And there'll be some good players left at five. It's, it's not like Definitely. there's only three players uh, in, in there and, and, and the top three, and then they're gonna and they're gonna be gone. The kid from Virginia, uh, DeAndre like Hunter, like he'll probably him. end up at the Lakers though at four. Because you know the top three is going to be Zion, R.J., and J. Moran, or Zion, J. Moran, and, 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 and R.J. Barrett. And then you still got Cam Reddish out there. Exactly. So, I mean, th- there are guys to be had at, 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 at five. My main concern at the, mo- at the moment, I, I, oh, wow. I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with this with this dude that, that we have. I, I, I don't. I'm not feeling John Byline or Bayline or whatever his Somebody name is. Somebody get the insure out. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling that pick at all. Not feeling it. It feels like. It feels like Gilbert trying to, you know, reach out to his Michigan roots to bring in a coach. I didn't know Scotty Pippen was a fifth round, a uh, fifth pick. Yeah. yeah. By the Seattle Seattle, Seattle Supersonics, and they traded in Chicago. Out there that that became Hall of Famers. Vince Carter. Vince Carter. Mm hmm. Even Charles, well, Charles Barkley was a. Charles Barkley was another one. Charles Barkley was another one. Hall of Fame career. It's not where you pick, it's who you pick. If you can get, if if you got scouts that are good enough to identify Donovan Mitchell as a talent at 13, we should be able to find somebody that can help this squad at, at, at number five. DeMarcus Cousins? Yep. Next order of business, though, get Kevin Love out of here. That's the next order of business. K Love got to go, and if we can get Tristan out of here too, fine. Get him out of here too. It's not gonna happen. Kevin Love got to go, man. Who wants Kevin Love's contract? Somebody will take Kevin Love. Hey, what 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 year is he on? What do you what do you got? Two years left? One year left on his deal? I believe so. But they signed him into the extension though. He got. They got to get him out of here, man. I know somebody who will take him. L. A. LeBron. LeBron. (laughs) That's his boy. Yeah, Dude. but who would you get? Who would you trade uh, Kevin Love for to the Lakers? I, I don't mean, care. It was Brandon Ingram. Yeah, I don't care. I, I, I don't. don't want I, Brandon, oh, I do Brandon not care. Ingram. He he could be developed, man. I, Brandon Ingram, oh, man. he got potential. E. 
more potential than Kevin Love. I don't I don't care who they get for Kevin Love. Get him out of here. You're not going to – Kevin Love is not the kind of guy you build a team around. They tried it in Minnesota. It didn't work. Then he came here and deferred to being second fiddle to LeBron James, which is fine. And at this stage in his career, you're not building a team around Kevin Love. What did he play last year? 22 games last year? Yeah. Come on, man. Get this dude out of here. You're not building around Kevin Love. Well, who's going to build around? Colin Sexton? Yes. <laughs> yes. Colin he, Sexton. Yes. Who else, really? who else on the squad are we going to do? Ke- Kevin Love? Tristan? You can't build around Kevin Love. That's who need to be out of here, too. He needs Package to be, he him and Kevin too. Love. We just need to start clean, man. Exactly my point. Get him out of here. Anything left from that 2016 yeah. championship team, get it out of here. I guarantee yeah. you, if you're trying to build a team around Colin Sexton, he has to pass the ball somehow. It's well, a, we can work We can work on that. But I, I, I'll, I'll take my chances with a Colin Sexton if they can get a Brandon Ingram in. I, I'll take my chances. Cam Reddish. So I, I'll take my chances with that. I don't even want Cam Reddish. I would just say trade the damn pick. For what, though? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing. I like Because after Zion, after um, Jay, and um, after uh, R.J. Barrett, there's nobody else. Yes, what happened is. to yes, the Morant yes, kid? Jay that, Morant. Yeah, that's, that's that, the job. Memphis won't help, Memphis right? Memphis him bad. Yeah, yeah he's going to Memphis. Memphis won him. They're, 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 talented. they're still very talented players after three. Eli, but you you gotta find it. You gotta get him, and it's not. It ain't that hard to do. There are really talented players out there. You can find them. We are the Cleveland Cavaliers. We're known to screw up. Well, a draft well, pick. no, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. That was. Are you trying to tell me? Okay, the Anthony Bennett pick. Yeah, but that that's not this regime though. That's this this is a different. This is a different regime. But that's Kobe Altman was part of that regime, man. Yeah, but he's not gonna pick Anthony. He's not. He's not. He's, they're not doing that again. I mean, you, listen. You got every every draft. Zion might be a bust in the NBA. We don't know. Every every pick is a, is a draft draft. Uh, is, I mean, every draft pick is a crapshoot. Again, Donovan Mitchell was the thirteenth overall pick. I don't think anybody thought Donovan Mitchell would be as great as he is being picked at thirteen. You just you got to pick the right guy for your system that can flourish in your system. And yes, Colin Sexton is one of the guys you build around because he's shown he can play in this league. Reggie, you owe that man an apology. Um, yeah, show me in meaningful basketball. You know that. Come on, uh, see, come on. Oh, you know we weren't playing on meaningful basketball. Not this year. That's what I'm saying. I need to see it this year from it's a clean slate. This year slate. won't be meaningful. And from when we're, everybody's zero on zero, that means everybody got a <laughs> we chance. Gonna, right. We're gonna suck. <laughs> we're gonna suck this year too. <laughs> but but I'm I'm saying yes. Colin Sexton is one of the guys you build around. If not the guy, at least at the moment. But I Colin Sexton is one. I, I you got to though. Who else you gonna do it around? Uh, if he, you really want to try to bid around Kevin Love, I'm telling you, if this if Colin Sexton get into a sophomore slump, he's up there on my list with Mo Williams and and, and Aaron Rodgers and uh, all those other guys. I'm with you. He got to show me. He got to prove it to me. Yeah. He's already shown. Two. What are you talking about? He's already I, okay. What thirty games? I mean. This was we're the not, garbage we, come season. Come on, we weren't okay, but we weren't playing. We weren't playing. You come on, you guys knew we weren't going to compete for anything this year. Yeah, but anybody give him his props for this. He had it for what he had like seventeen. He, he, eight he and, put some numbers up, but right. it's, it's easy to do when ain't no pressure on when you when you you have no but expectations. That, for and the whole meaning of a point guard is to actually set up your um set up your uh, uh uh other players. He hasn't done that. Answer me this question: When when? When, when, when are the Cavaliers going to be in another position where there's a pressure situation? I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm not where saying. We're in the it. I'm just for a playoff spot. It's going to be. It's going to be two. It's going to be two or three years before we there. So y'all going to get. Y'all going to keep talk, saying but this you, for two you, or three years. You read Colin Sexton's quote from yesterday. He said he, they got a chance to make the playoffs this nah, year. Nah, we, well, what, what, what else? Talking crazy say? already. That, that's what oh, he stop said. It. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. 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 That's out of because his. That's out of no, that man's mouth. Nope, nope, nope. Because y'all loved it when Greedy Williams said, "Are we going to Super Bowl this year?" Y'all love that. But it's the kind of difference. Y'all, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, 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 no. You see what we got on no, our football team compared no, to our basketball team? No. What the Gre- hell are you talking Gre- about? Greedy no. got to show up too for when, saying when that. Greedy said oh, we yeah. got, he got to show up too for All saying that. Cleveland loved that. What 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 context is supposed to say? He better show. Greedy better show up. I know that. <laughs> y'all, y'all loved it when Greedy Williams said it. Greedy better show up. When Greedy said we're going to – Greedy – Colin Sexton said we got, we got a chance to make the playoffs. Greedy said we're going to win the Super Bowl. Greedy and y'all better. was like, yeah. On paper. Uh, on paper. <laughs> Stop it. 
Greedy better Stop. show up, Kev. If Greedy don't show up, he right. will, I will bash him every week uh, on this uh, show. Okay, I, I hope so. <laughs> I, <will bash> him. <laughs> I hope so. Because Greedy said that. Y'all was like, yeah, Greedy. Let him come out there and get, get uh, uh, I like the 100 boy, yard man. games thrown on him every week. And, and, and he getting the view. I will, I will torch Greedy like on this show. I like the young show. boy, man. Talk that. Look, what do you, what do you, I mean, what Colin's supposed to say? What he supposed to say? Of course he's going to say they, 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 they can make the playoffs. What are you going to say? Nah, we ain't that good yet. That's what you know. You know who's supposed to say that? The coach is supposed to say that. The players should never come out. Even the player don't think that they, the player should never come out and say, "Nah, you know, I don't think we that good. We we not good enough." Because if you don't believe you that good to make the playoffs, you shouldn't even be out there to begin with. Like the coach can come out now. A coach, you know, a Bill Parcells or somebody like that to come out there and be like, "Nah, we not even close." But the player should never say that. Even if they think it, they should never actually say it out in public. So what he's supposed to say? Yeah, they gonna they got a chance to make the playoffs. But that's what he's supposed to say. He's a player. He's going to believe. He believes in his own abilities, and he should. He believes in his own ability, huh? How about you pass the damn ball? Okay, well, we can, <laughs> but that's but that's that's things you can learn. You you can you can teach him that. You can you can you can learn that. He can he can learn oh, okay. that. You can teach we'll him see that. if he learns that this year. We can teach him that. Teach him that. I don't know why y'all are so down on the young boy. He, I don't know. Like, Westbrook ain't learned to pass. Well, that's because has anybody <laughs> actually tried to make Westbrook pass? That's the thing. We need to is 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 byline or whatever how you already say his last name. Is he gonna try to make Colin Westbrook pass? Oh man, Breline, yeah. Yeah, Bree Breline, is that what it is? You so you never know. Maybe he might bring in this system and Colin LeBron into it. You would never know. But I'm just going off his numbers based on his rookie season. For a rookie on a team that bad, he had a good season. He had a good season for a rookie. Yeah. And now he got a build on it. But this team, as far as playing a meaningful basketball, we're not playing meaningful basketball for another couple of years. So y'all can y'all can toss that bit of criteria out. Because we're not playing meaningful basketball for another couple of years. I'm it, sorry. It's not happening. Uh, 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 dude won't be the coach if he don't get them out there this, playing. This this division at the mo- at the present time belongs to the Milwaukee Bucks and that's it. It does. But we all know sports is a win now uh, it is. type of sport. So you got you got but, a but, year but, and but a half. Breline, Breline needs In a couple of seasons. In five years, this, man, this coach will be 71 years old. Well, hey, man. He's 66? Yeah. Oh. Mark, look, hey. Marv Levy was going to the Super Bowls when he was in his 60s and 70s. So, hey, I, I, if you can coach, and he you can never coach. coached in the NBA. That's before. my that's my issue. That is my issue. Yes, he's from that school up north, but whatever. He's never coached in the NBA. What the hell does Mark Jackson got to do to get a call from somebody, man? I don't think Mark Jackson want to coach. I mean, okay, did you call him though and ask him <laughs> if you want to coach? That's what I'm saying. Did you? Did, did, is it why? Is Mark Jackson not your favorite commentator? Though, I mean, right yeah, he now, is calling yeah. the games. I mean, I would take Jackson. I would take Jeff Van Gundy. I take Stan Van Gundy over this Jim Breline or whatever. I don't even know his name. But this is going to be. We are. We need to be in full rebuild mode. If you can get rid of Tristan Thompson, get rid of Tristan Thompson. If you can get rid of Kevin Love, get rid of Kevin Love. I tell you, they got to go. And it pisses me off because. Like, we can't get rid of Tristan Thompson. Nobody wants Tristan Thompson's contract. Nobody wants – we can't even give J.R. Smith away. Well, you can thank LeBron James for that. He got them that money, yeah. He got him and J.R. paid. So, we should trade nope. him to the Lakers. Nope. 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 That's not LeBron. That is LeBron. No, Are you serious? That is LeBron. No, LeBron not. got Tristan Thompson that money. That's the front office. It is I the mean, front office. How, how many times I got to say it? Your, the, your front office got to ha- – has some balls. No, LeBron. The, Tristan Thompson ain't worth $82 million. We're not doing that. We're not hamstringing our organization for the future because you want Tristan Thompson to get paid. We're not doing that. Because I guarantee you, we all know there wasn't a team in this league that was, was, that was, that was going to give Tristan Thompson that money. Not Nobody. one. Nobody. Not even close to that money. Nobody. Most teams would have gave him $30 million less than what we gave him. I That's think he only LeBron. got one other offer that was from the Toronto Raptors. That was the only other team that offered him a contract. You should let him go to Toronto. Should let him go to Toronto. And if LeBron wanted to leave after that, okay, see you later. Because he was going to leave anyways. That's the front office. That's Gilbert and Kobe Altman. Who, who was well, it? David Griffin. Was. David Griffin. Who did, who did he just uh, sign the Pelicans. With? He and got then a, Pelicans they got the first nice. round. Uh, they got Pelicans the first be, pick. He got to be loving this. David yeah. Griffin got to be loving just this. Just think about what he's going to get for AD now. If, if, he's, he's, in a no, he's in a no-lose situation. Well, he is. You can either convince Anthony Davis to stay and put him in that front court with Zion and Julius Randle, or you can trade Anthony Davis to get a boatload of players players and picks and build around Zion. He can't he can't lose. Because Kev, they are they already show Anthony Davis trade value. The uh Los Angeles Lakers was willing to give 
Ball, Ingram, and Kuzma up, and they declined that. So you got to come with a better offer than that now. I mean, David Griffin is is sitting in the catbird seat right now. He, he has got to be on cloud nine. Like, word is, these are my options. Keep Anthony Davis and have Anthony Zion and Julius Randle in my front court. Or trade Anthony Davis and get a bunch of uh, players and probably a couple of picks and to go And still have Drew Holiday and still, Zion. Come on, man. <laughs> and David Griffin is a damn good GM. He's going to make something happen either way. It might not be to the summertime. It'll be probably be deep in the summer when something happens, but he's going to make something happen. Definitely. Where you want to go, AD? And where you going to go? <laughs> I'll send you there. Let me just make sure I get what I what I need to get back yeah. from that team. Yeah. And, and we can make it happen. Damn, we should have kept David Griffin, man. But it is what it is. Stop hating on Colin Sexton. All right, man, so we'll take a break. We'll get out. We'll come back at 730. John Hughley from the Rush Arcs will be joining us, and we'll chop it up with John for a little bit, check in with him, see what's going on. So stick and stay, hang out. We'll be back in a little bit. Eli's name of the song. Uh, the name of the song is called Angels by William Beats. Uh, this is the Quad Brothers Sports Show, a one-unit media network. The Quad. Back to the show. John Hughley calling in at 7.30. John Hughley from Brush. Talk to John, chop it up. So there are preliminary reports that probably sometime this summer, the Philadelphia Eagles and Carson Wentz will agree to a contract extension in the range of around $30 million per year. Wow. I'll take it. I mean, honestly, what else are they going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Who else? Nate yeah. Sudfeld? Nah, I'm cool. Yeah. I like Nate. I mean, they like Nate. I don't really know who Nate Sudfeld is, but they like him, but nah. One thing you need to do with Carson Wentz, wrap his ass up in some bubble wrap. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm dispelling that right now. Here, here's the thing. Carson Wentz played his whole rookie season. He didn't get hurt the next season until week 13. Mm. And by that time, he had thrown for over 3,000 yards, 33 touchdowns. He got hurt on a fluke play diving into the end zone where two players just happened to come together on his knee. So it ain't like he just went down on a non-contact injury. He yeah. got hurt diving into the end zone and two players smashed his knee. He came back the next season way too early, less than a year from, from tearing his ACL and MCL, came back way too early. Played in some games, still had about 3,000 uh, yards and more touchdowns and interceptions, and then he had to go out. So I'm not, I'm not sure. He's he started of 48 games that he's played. He started 40 or 48 games. I'm not sure where his injury prone label comes from, because if you just look at the facts, it, it's not true. How can you how can you play 40 or 48 games and be injury prone? I, I don't get that. So it, can somebody explain that to me? Because I don't. I, where are you getting from? I don't see. This is what. I think I think he'll stay healthy this year and he gonna ball. And I I got Philly. As of right now, I got Philly winning the division. Here's all I'm saying. The year the Eagles went to the Super Bowl, they had two things. A competent offensive line, which I expect them to have this year, mm-hmm. and a running game. And now they got now they now they, now they got they still got Clement, still got Corey Clement, they got Jordan Howard, they got this kid, uh, Miles Sanders from Penn State. When you get when Carson Wentz had a competent offensive line and a solid running game, three thousand over three thousand yards and thirty three touchdowns in thirteen games. Also, they had Nick Foles. Nick Foles didn't do any of that before Carson Wentz got hurt. We we talking oh, about? Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about in the playoffs. Well, yeah, but I mean, listen, mm. I, y'all say what you want, but I mean, if Baker go down, y'all done. Y'all done. It's a wrap for y'all. Yeah. yeah. Just hope, it, I don't but that, but it's what our backup is. <laughs> exactly. Drew Stanton. Oh, oh okay. no. Okay. All right. So I, I'm just saying. Really win a division, though, okay. Kev. It's like that with any quarterback, though. We, 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 usually, when you start to go down, unless. Nick Foles was the exception to the rule because because the last time a quarterback actually did that was probably Tom Brady. The last time the starter True. went down and the backup came in and the starter just and the backup came in and just lit it up. Aaron Rodgers. Well, yes and no because Brett Favre kind of retired and Aaron Rodgers was a first round pick. You know what I'm saying? Like Nick Foles was a third round pick. Tom Brady was a sixth round. He pick. still was the backup quarterback. He though. he was, but he was he was expected to take over that role anyway. That's why Brett Favre was like, it's not my job to teach. And what is with Joe? Let me just sidetrack. What's with Joe Flacco? It's not my job to teach it. Huh? <laughs> Joe Flacco trying to go to Brett Favre? It's not my job to teach the young guy. He said that? He said that. Who was who, who's that? Who's the, who the, who the, the quarterback that? Um, Lamar Jackson. You're talking about no, Lamar no, no, Jackson. in Denver. Because he's in Denver now. Oh, uh. Whoever the quarterback yeah, is, if they got they got a young they got a young quarterback. I, there. No I can't idea. I can't remember who the backup is, but he's a, he's a young quarterback. I can't remember who they draft. Oh, um, was it Drew Locke, the kid from Missouri? I think it was it might have been Drew Locke. Yeah, it was Drew Locke. Okay, so it's like oh, it's not my job to to. to Locke always been kind of like bitter, like. What is who? What? I mean, I could get that from Brett, but Brett was that way too. Yeah, and I guess was. in a way, it's really not their job to tutor the young guys. It would help if they did, but I guess it's really not their job. But no, look, Nick Foles is the exception to the rule. And it, look, you know me, man. I got mad respect and love for Nick Foles. Nick Foles is a legend in Philly, Philly sports, Philly sports lore and, and Philly sports history. Nick Foles' place is solidified. Nick Foles is right up there with, you know, cats like Mike Schmidt and, and, and Darren Dalton and, you know what I mean, Dr. J. Nick Foles is right up to Barkley. Nick Foles is up there with those dudes. Trust and believe. Nick Foles, when you lay out the pantheon of Philly sports, Nick Foles is up there with those guys. Got to be all love. He got to be all. It's got to be all love. But everybody known or knew or should have known that Nick Foles – was not the long-term answer for the Eagles. Because Nick Foles has about, what, seven years or so on Carson Wentz. Nick Foles is close to retiring when, when he – He's like he 32, retired. ain't he? Yeah, Nick Foles is – he's early 30s, at least 30, 31. 31, 32, something like that. You you invested in Carson Wentz. You have exactly. to go back to Carson you Wentz. You got to go to Carson Wentz. And Carson Wentz showed you what he can do when you give him a competent offensive line in of the running game. He showed you what he can do. 
3,000 yards, over 3,000 yards, and 33 touchdowns in 13 games. He showed you what he can do. He still got Alshon Jeffrey. At the moment, they still got Nelson Aguilar. Now they got Deshaun Jackson. You still got Zach Ertz. You still got Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard. Jason Peters is coming back. You still got Lane Johnson on the right side. I mean, they have talent on that offense. Now they got to put it all together. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But $30 million a year, yeah, why not? I'll take that. Because who else are you going to pay? Who else are you going to get that money to? There's nobody out there worth it. So, yeah, give it to Carson Wentz. That's fine. Take it, Carson. But Carson needs to show and prove. Definitely. He got it. And I'm saying this as a needle saying Carson got to – Nick set the bar. Carson got to get up to that bar. Definitely. You got to keep the Cowboys at bay. You might have to keep the Giants at bay. Washington, who knows what Haskins is going to do in Washington. And like I said, uh, Kev, I got five quarterbacks this season that has to show up. Carson Wentz, one of them. Uh, Jameis Winston is another one. Mm-hmm. Marcus Mariota is another one. Matt Ryan and Deshaun Watson. Oh, so you're not going to put Baker Mayfield in that list, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to put Baker Mayfield in that list? Come on, girl. Uh, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> You know what Parcells say? You are what your record says you are. <laughs> seven, eight, and one is seven, eight, and one, bro. And re- four of those games ain't responsible, bro. Okay. okay. You need to put Baker. Make a big, you know why? Because like I said before, all the hype that's around him. And Baker doing a lot of chirping, man, especially going back and forth to Kyle Hurst. Man, Baker, that's, that's Odell, man, doing Baker, all that Baker chirping, man. I just wish Baker, Odell would come to count. Baker on Twitter wilding, man. Yeah, I, I, that's because he trying to back on his Odell. Okay. I wish Odell would just come to count, be quiet, and work, man. Just, just. But that's not Odell. It, it ain't. Baker Baker need, to, Baker need to show up, too. Because if Baker lead this team to 6-10. and 10, Unacceptable. 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 Not with this talent that's on his roster. Exactly. It's, it's unacceptable. I love when people talk crap about us. I love it. I love the fact that, well, you know, on paper the Browns are, you know, good, but, you know, when they going to show up and, you know, this is a that's, fake That's a legitimate, that's and, a legitimate yeah, question, though. Yeah. Eli. That's legitimate. Uh, that's yeah, legitimate. I know that's legitimate, it's but legitimate. other people are saying, well, you know, there ain't nothing and everything. Please keep, keep on talking crap. Yeah. Please. I mean, you got to show it, though. You got oh, to show, show it. You yeah. got to show it. And another thing what I want to ask, what the hell wrong with Adam Gates not wanting Le'Veon on the I team? don't know, man. <laughs> know. And they fired well, their general manager. Well, here's the thing. From what I understand, Adam Gase, it's not that Adam Gates didn't want Le'Veon. Adam Gates didn't want Le'Veon at that price. That's not his his business, though. That's the office business. Your business well, is to coach the guys that's the on the guy field. The guy that made the decision is fired now, so. That's between the agent and the uh, general manager. Yeah. But, it, it, but, it's, but it's a couple of guys on that squad, which I don't understand. There's a couple of guys on that squad, like Leonard Williams. I don't think Adam, I don't think Gates likes what Leonard Williams is getting paid. Uh, what? Leonard Williams is a big, what are you talking about, Adam Gates? <laughs> and you can put you can put Leonard Williams in there with with Quinn and Williams. You can have the Williams the, the Williams brothers in in there. Um, okay, well Adam Gates, right? Didn't he used to coach in with Miami? And, and, and you, I don't believe you have a winning record as right. and a coaching no, winning no, record. He doesn't. I don't get it, man. He need to shut his damn mouth. I do not get it. But post, I, I do, but I, I do, but I don't. He wants Le'Veon, but not the, at that price that they paid Le'Veon. Yeah, okay. That, that's not my problem. But. I don't. They're not getting rid of Lavia. Right. They, you know, you do that, it'll be an uproar. And because uh, because but, but how do the Le'Veon feel right now though? You know what I mean? You gotta go out. Well, you gotta go out. And, go out and prove that you're worth the money. That's that's the best. The best way to get Adam Gates on your side is to go out and prove you worth that money. But sometimes when these players get big big contracts like that, man, it's but it's it's on it's on both though. It's on it's on Le'Veon Bell and it's on Adam Gates because it's on. Adam Gase to put Le'Veon in the best position to perform. Mm -hmm. I always go back to Chip Kelly and DeMarco Murray. Chip Kelly got DeMarco Murray running sweeps and toss sweeps. No, that's not DeMarco Murray's game. No, I don't know. I couldn't couldn't understand that. Me either. You run DeMarco (laughs) Murray through the tackles, man, and it's all good. He got rid of LaShawn McCoy and Deshaun Jackson, two two players that were perfect for his system. He got rid of them. And brought in DeMarco Murray and start running toss sweeps with DeMarco Murray. That's not DeMarco Murray's game. 
and DeMarco Murray suffered for, for it. But then when DeMarco Murray went to Tennessee, he had a bit of a bounce back because they used him the way he's – that's his game. His style is running between tackles. He's a bruiser. So it's, it's, it's going to be on Adam Gates to put Le'Veon Bell in a position. But you can run toss sweeps with Le'Veon Bell. That's the thing. You can get creative with Le'Veon Bell. You can have Le'Veon Bell come out of the backfield because he's a phenomenal receiver out of the backfield for a running back. And he sat a whole year or so. He got a lot of tread on them tires. So it's going to be up to Adam Gates to put aside the money. First of all, Adam, why are you in Le'Veon's pockets, number one? That, right. That's that's You're my point. Mm-hmm. For. How much you getting paid from the Jets, Adam? You haven't done anything. How much is Adam Gates getting paid Have from the Jets? Have he even won a playoff game? Nope. Have nope. he been to the playoffs? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't believe so. How much? How much have you? What have you done, Adam Gates? How much you getting paid? Don't don't start don't start doing it. You 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 looking at you in another man's pockets. Let's look at your pockets and your performance in relation to how much money you making. Uh, quick update: uh, Toronto over Milwaukee, thirty three twenty seven, second quarter. So, yeah, it, it'll be on on late on on Adam Gates. Say, okay, look. I may not like what he's getting paid, but I've got a stud here and I need to use him to maximize his talent and to take pressure off of Sam Darnold because that's necessary too. Okay, well, you uh, you got the hand, you, you I mean, you got the team like go out there and coach him. I mean, exactly. go out there and coach him. Earn your money. You you right. worried about Le'Veon's money, earn your money, Adam Gates. Get out of Le'Veon's pockets and worry about what's in your own pocket and are you performing up to your standards? Well, he didn't do that in Miami. Just saying. So, you're supposed to be this this, this quarterback guru, this quarterback whisperer, this offensive. You have Le'Veon Bell. You have one of the most complete running backs in the game at your disposal. Go out and show us that you're not the offensive guru that everybody says you are. And, and and get Le'Veon Bell run up between tackles. Get Le'Veon Bell in space. Get those misma- mismatches on 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 linebacker. There ain't a linebacker in this league that can cover Le'Veon Bell. Not one at all. Not one. I don't care if it's Cleo Mack. He's not staying with with with, with Le'Veon Bell at all. Not happening. The Le'Veon Bell is the best receiving back in the league. Period. Point blank. So go out there and use him. Y- you know what I'm saying? It's like you you get okay. It's like you get a new truck, right? You get a new truck or you get like I say you get a new Jeep. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go out there, you're gonna take it out on the trails, you're gonna get it muddy, you're gonna get it dirty, you're gonna run on some stuff and see if can it re- is it really as tough as they say it is. Can it really handle what they say it can handle? You got one of the best running backs in the league, running wise and receiving out of the backfield. Go out there and use him. Put him in positions where he can best succeed and go out there and handle it. So I I don't know. if I'm Adam Gates, I'm not mad. I got I need a running back to take pressure off of Sam Darnold, and they got me Le'Veon Bell? What's to be mad about? Uh, definitely a big upgrade from uh, Isaiah Crowell. Man, listen. Mm. <laughs> Huge upgrade. And the Jets had a pretty damn good draft, too. There are things to be excited about in New York. The Giants are kind of on the eh at the moment. I think they, with that, the drafting of that quarterback, I think they set themselves back another five they years. They're reeling from that. <laughs> They still reeling from that. I, I, hey man, who knows? They still don't. They still don't have free Saquon. They, their best <laughs> receiver right now is Golden Tate. Take that, you know. Just let that sink in. Eli, Eli <laughs> Manning's best receiver right now is Golden Tate. You think he's better than Shepard? Uh, I, I think it's I don't know. yeah, because only because he's a veteran with a lot more experience. But but. Overall, no. Because Sterling Shepard is what? He's his second or third year? Yeah. And he hasn't really done anything. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. What is going on with, with, with Patrick Peterson? Suspended six games for, for PED violation. So, see, it, this is a, every time every time I see something like this, I see a guy suspended for PEDs, I'm like, so was he really as good as we said, as we thought he was? Was Patrick Peterson really that good, or was it the PED? Well, see, we don't know, like, because Patrick Peterson, and I didn't read the whole story, so I, I'll just I'll just say that I didn't read the whole story. On something he took perp- on purpose, or something, because you know sometimes there, even though there's really no that's no excuse either, but they'll be they'll take a supplement or something in that supplement that's banned on the list, and 
But you're supposed to know what's banned. You're supposed to know what's banned. You can you can call and ask. They have a number you can call and ask. If it's something you feel, I don't know. You need to. Sorry, that's me. My bad. The quad. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking man. around like, what the? <laughs> but but the thing is, so like, there's a number you can call. You could call the National Football League and say, "Yo, I'm taking supplement X." Is this? Is there anything in this that's on the the banned substances? That before I take it, is there anything on this that it's simple? You can have your agent do that. You can have your publicist do that. You can have your 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 your, your assistant do that. Hey, just call the league office and, and, and ask them, tell them what this is what I'm taking, ask them if something is banned in this. That's that's what, what really gets me about a lot of this stuff. And that it's so easily avoidable. I tell you know, my you know, my, my girls, they argue a lot sometimes. And that makes sense. They argue a lot. And most of, when you when you sit them down and you talk to them about what, what the argument is about, you realize it's a lot of stuff that could be it's avoidable. You know what I mean? Like one <laughs> one girl is too worried about what the other girl is doing, and they get to a fight. Yada 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 yada. yada. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you like why are you worried about what what she's doing? You let me and mom handle that. We'll handle that. Right. You worried about what you, she's not in bed yet? Why are you worried? We told you to go to bed. <laughs> right. You know, what I mean? we told you to go to bed. Why are you worried about what she's doing? We know she's still up. We we doing something right now. Right. Well, we'll handle that. Right. She's still up out of bed. Oh, okay. Well, if she's up out of bed, we'll we'll take care of it. We know she up. We can Sibilous. hear us. Yeah, <laughs> serverless. It's like do you we we can hear her. We we understand that. We can hear. We we understand she's, that she's up. You don't have to come and tell us. We know, and we'll handle it. Things that can be easily avoided. Call the league office. Yo, this is what I'm taking. There you go. This is what I'm taking. Is it banned? Is there anything on here that's banned? I'm just I'm trying to read the story to see exactly what what he was what he took, but it doesn't really say in the story that I can see. Um. Oh, so see, so this happened months ago. He said he he Patrick Peterson knew about this months ago. I'm happy the Browns ain't trying to trade for him because there was rumors out there of us trying to trade for him. I mean, I just, I don't know, man. I wonder what's, what, what what these dudes are doing. You know what I'm saying? That, look, it's not that the Carlos is going to cut him, but we, you know. We, but now you now you look at, you start looking and seeing, okay, after this six-game suspension, let's see how Patrick Peterson plays when he comes back. Because every time something like this happens, now you got to wonder, oh, man, was, was Patrick Peterson really that good? What, you been to eight Pro Bowls? Yeah, yeah, eight straight. Was he really that good, or was the PEDs? How long has he been taking these PEDs? Because you guarantee you just ain't, he just ain't start. He just got caught. That's what I think. Oh, Pat, oh Kawhi. Uh oh, Kawhi, Kawhi hurt. Kawhi, Kawhi hurt. Oh, He's limping. No. He's limping. That's not good. No, not at all. Not at all. And let me just let me just go back go back to basketball for a second. Man, people need to get off of um, Joel and Beach back. <laughs> nah, seriously. You seen the man? You seen? You seen the face though? Hey, come on. <laughs> Look, man. Get off the. Get off his back. <laughs> yes. Get off his back. This guy talks the most crap out of any NBA player in the league right does, now. Does he, he deserves does, what no, he, he get. No, he doesn't. Does he back it up? Does he back up the crap that he talks? I don't know. What? Huh? Don't he don't know. know. I don't know. You know, yes, I'm Joel not, I'm Embiid. Not, I'm not an Embiid fan. Joel Embiid backs up everything. It, it ain't what they say. It's not bragging if you can back it up. Joel Embiid backs up what he talks. Well, yeah. Now, to lose a seven game series like that in that fashion, that's 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 come on, man. That's yeah. gotta like. I'd rather get. I'd, I'd rather try to hold it out. to the locker room, though, Kev. I'd try to hold it. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> you don't cry. You don't cry, bro. Nah, oh, this, 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 this is this is the thing we gotta stop doing. And I, I, I'm, I'm not going to try to be too serious, but this thing we got to stop doing. We got to stop making it seem like dudes can't cry, even in public. We got to stop doing that. Look, man, those guys go out there and they work hard. We got to stop telling these these men and these young men that 
you can't cry and put you can't out really show emotion in public. Look, man, they work hard during the whole season, the whole season. And then I would rather get blown out by 20 than lose. Me like too. That. Me too. I would rather get blown out by 20 Off than lose light. like that. It hit the bottom of the rim. When have you ever seen a shot hit the bottom of the and rim the and bounce just, up? The way he just threw it up, too. That's the thing. I would rather lose by 20 than get beat by that. Man, that looks like, like the that. end of a basketball movie right there. But I, 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 think, <laughs> I think we have to stop telling these young cats, and we do it, especially in our community, we do it early, man. We, we started early. Stop all that crying. Yeah, there's some times you shouldn't be crying. But, man, after that, I'm not going to look, man. I, I don't I, – because I can't – I don't know what that feels like to lose a game like that. Game seven? Yes. Like that on that kind of a shot? That's got to hurt, man, yeah, bad. Because you know that it's like – it's almost like the, 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 the reality kicks you in the chest and the finale of it are like, yo. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, it's over. My, my season is over. I'm not – we're not coming back to Philly – we're, we're not coming back to Toronto for another game in two nights. It's over. Our season is done. We are not advancing. We're not winning the championship this year. It's done. It's over with. And I always use Dan Marino as the benchmark. How many people thought Dan Marino went to the Super Bowl in his rookie season? He led the Dallas to the Super Bowl. And people were like, y'all know he's going to be back. He never went back. He never went back. And he played. He, got, he was in the 83 draft. Dan Marino retired, I believe, in... 2000, Dan Marino retired, 1999, 2000. From 83 to 99, 2000, he never went back to the Super Bowl. That's crazy. I don't even think he went back to the, I don't even think he went back to the AFC Championship game. You never know. You might never get back. That's the thing about sports, man. You could play forever and not make it. How great was Barry Sanders and he never went to the Super Bowl? Hmm. He didn't get did to the Super Bowl. He never. We never. Did Barry make it to the playoffs? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he did. They uh, made it one year and got smoked by Philly, and then they made it a, a, another. I think another one this year. But overall, no, he was he was out of the playoffs more than he was in the playoffs. He might only made the playoffs two or three times. Wow. In his career. All that talent. Exactly, and he's one of the greatest running backs to ever play. Top five, easy. Easy. And he never even got to the Super Bowl as great as he was. Gail Sayers never won a championship as great as he was. Like, you just never, you never, ever know. You never know. So, yeah, when you lose a game like that and, 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 and you, you can't advance and you know your season is done, yeah, it hurts. It hurts. And I'm not, I, I've never been one to be like, oh, man, you shouldn't be crying out there. LeBron nah, never man. did that. Le- well, no, he didn't. He didn't. LeBron, but but yeah. LeBron's not Joel Embiid. They, they might not, they, they wired differently. But mm. that's okay. Mm. They wired differently. LeBron's not consumed with winning championships. I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't knock him for that. Michael Jordan was consumed with winning championships. Kobe Bryant was consumed with winning championships. LeBron's not like that. I don't, I don't knock him for that. That's just how he's wired. He's not. He wants to win. You know he wants to win, but he's not consumed. It's not all consuming. Like his whole life isn't based on winning championships. And I'm fine with that. He's balanced. That's cool. You know what Tom Hanks said in a league of their own, right? There's yeah, no crying in ba- baseball. I, I do. I get it. I, yeah. I get it, but I don't no get it. Crying in basketball, either. Yeah, you can cry. I was pissed off today too. My RJ was crying in the game today. We had a game today, and I lost it, man. He, he started crying, and I blew a head gasket. <laughs> we was losing, and he wanted to win, so he started crying, and the other kids was laughing at him on the other team, and I'm like, man, you never. Let your opponent see you drop tears on your face. They laughing at you. And he hurried up and wiped them off. And I just was pissed, man. I just, I don't know. I, I just, I personally have a problem with it. Show, show emotion. You know why? Because we often, what do we hear a lot about these athletes, man? They just out there to collect a check. They don't really care. They don't care about whether they win or lose. Because they're going to get paid anyway. That check going to hit on Monday regardless. They don't care. But Joel B cares. I'd rather I'd rather see and know that my that, that that my guys care than to walk around thinking, man, Joel Embiid don't care. He don't care nothing about himself. He get ready to go to the off season and party, and he might still party this off season. But you know he cares about losing this game. You know he's gonna be motivated for next season because you know that's gotta hurt. Joe, what Joel Embiid needs to do this off season is a better diet plan and it's losing weight, losing weight, lose some weight. Get with I I now tell you who 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 he needs to get with. 
Hakeem Olajuwon. Hakeem Olajuwon is known for breed, you know, he has a little camp that he invites, like, centers to, you know, to mentor him. So you need to get with one of the greatest and, you know, get get yourself together and then come back strong next season. Yeah, I mean, look, he could get he could get with a, with a lot of guys. I mean, he could get with Kareem. He could get with uh, Hakeem. He could get with David Wright. He could get with a lot of guys out there and work on his post game. But don't tell me that Joel Embiid don't care because I, 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 I see that and I say Joel Embiid cares. And I would much rather see that. So it's okay to cry when you win, but not when you lose. See, I don't get that. It's okay to cry when you win. Nobody killed Jordan for crying when, when he won the championship. Nobody killed him for that. But isn't that the year his his father okay, passed? Yeah, okay. But we don't, somebody but killed we don't, his father? Yeah, but we don't know what's going on in Joel and B's life. So it could be something going on in Joel and B's life that we don't know about. You see what I'm saying? I think I think I think we try to be I think we try to be a little bit too macho sometimes with with, with 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 our sports. You know what I'm saying? Like, stop making these cats feel like it's not okay to be emotional. Emotional part of sports. I just don't uh, that's, don't cry on me. That's that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem with that's the problem with a lot of these young cats out here. They desensitize because we tell them their whole lives don't be soft. Crying is soft. What Showing you want, what, you soft. Want, what you want them to do? Hold hands? No, I want it. No, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't want. I'm not going to ridicule a guy or make fun of a guy because he cried on the court after losing a game like that. Now, it, it is a different little case when you got like Adam Morrison who was crying. The game wasn't even over yet. They still had a chance to win the game, and it was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he was I crying. Mean, heartbreak city. Yeah. Boy. They was. They was. He was still trying to win the game. You know what you do? All right. You lose the game, you get back up, dust yourself off, come back strong. You ain't all just crying and everything. But, you, but, we, but, but why? 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 Why can't you? Why can't you cry after losing like that? Why? I does mean, it mean that he's be, weak? You can be, does, you does, can does, be does angry. Mean, but, does it mean yeah. that he's weak? Cause he cried. That's society. I mean, that's just, today. That's society's perception of you know people crying. You know, especially a black man. And that's the problem. That right there is the problem. That's why we got these young kids out. See, I'm getting ready to get serious. That's why we got these young kids out here who don't give a damn will go and shoot up any and shoot up a party full of 50 people to hit one person because they desensitize. And we show them, we, we tell them from a very young age, don't show your emotions. And it's like, yo, man, this dude, this dude just lost on a on a on a thrown up three. That bounced on the rim about four times before it actually went in. He just lost Game Seven. The most, you know what they say, the most, the most exciting two words in sports: Game Seven. He just lost Game Seven. The season is over on that play. Hey man, go ahead and cry. Go ahead and cry. And, sh- and props to Marcus Gasol, man, for 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 you know propping him up. I don't know, man. I just I don't have a problem with it. I don't me just me personally. It's what it's whatever. I'm not gonna be like Joe and L. Well and beat it soft and he's weak because he cried. I'm not doing that because he's we because I think we've seen enough of Joe and beat to know that he's not soft. He's not weak, and when he talks, whatever stuff he talks, he goes out and backs he it brought, up. I'm telling you, he brought that on to himself. You know, that's all I'm gonna say. He he's he backs it up though. Mm. He backs it up. That's he, like he memed up though. My son sent me the uh, picture of him. <laughs> 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 he he, you know, hey man, it's the, you know the internet. The internet is the internet. The internet, undefeated. Gonna, the internet is undefeated. They gonna get him. I'm just not gonna join in. I, hey, whatever, man. Do you, Joel? I'm glad to see this young man cares about it. All right, so, all right, let's do this, man. We're still waiting on John Hugo to call. Um, let's take a break. Let's get back. Uh, we'll we'll come back. We'll talk to John, and we'll hopefully we'll talk to John. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. So uh, take a time. That's the name of the song. All right, name of the song is called West Coast by Wesley Beats. This is the Quad Brothers Sports Show on One Unit Media Network. The Quad.
Robin Wesley. Rapping Wesley Productions. Robin West. Wesley Production. Back to the show, Eli Robinson. Yes, sir. I know when we talked baseball before the season started. Uh huh. I said to you, you know when teams you're going to look out for the Minnesota Twins. You said to me, no, 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 no. We ain't got to worry about the Twins. We ain't got to worry about them. Okay, no, no, okay. We ain't got to worry about them. Okay. Balling, guess, it's just guess, me. guess who's guess who's four and a half games ahead of us in, in leading the division? Okay, the Minnesota Twins. Sir. Okay, okay. The Tampa Bay Rays have a better record than the Cleveland Indians do right I now. I mean, a squirrel can find a nut any day. This ain't no squirrel can find a nut. They're thirty <laughs> and sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean to me? Like They're thirty okay. and sixteen it's leading just the division. Me. I told. See, I wish you would just listen to me sometimes, man. I told you the Twins is going to have a good season. Mm. Nah, we ain't got to worry about them, Cass. We ain't got to worry about them. Them bombs getting on my nerves. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to cap you. Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay is 27-17. and 17. Only a half game behind the Yankees for first place in the AL East. We're four and a half back of the Twins. It's just me. Astros are eight and a half up on the Angels. Oh, yeah, you remember the, the Astros, right? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember. All right. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you who balling out this season. You want a Reggie boy. Brewers, yeah. Christian Yelich is Oh, he got it. 19 home runs. Yelich yep. is killing it this season. 19 home runs. Is he, is he not one of the better players in the MLB yeah. right now? Yeah. Yeah. If not the home. best, at least at least for, for, from his current play. I wonder how Manny Machado is doing. Who is he playing for San now? Diego San struggling. Diego. Yeah. They San 23 Diego. and 23. Yeah. yeah. 23 and 24 now. Oh, 23 and 24. Yeah. Yep. Seven and a half back of the Dodgers. My my Braves keeping up with them Phillies. They, they right there. They in the two hunt. Half, two and a half back. Yeah, they in the hunt. Oh, just just letting y'all know. I've been saying it for two years now. Philly trip. It's a September. It's a September. I'm going to September. I'm just letting you know. You can't tell. You can't say I didn't tell you. I'm telling you right now. Right. Mm-hmm. September twenty second. 
against Detroit. That's the game. That's where I'm going to Philly. Philly so, versus Detroit. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get to another one too this year. I think I'm going to the Buffalo. My, one of my one of my partners, Ken. What I'm talking about, you know, Ken and Cannon, uh, offered me a ticket to the Buffalo game in Buffalo. That's like October, maybe October. So that's only three hours away, man. Hop on a hop on the highway, get up there to Buffalo, club seats. I might have to make that happen too. But I'm just I'm just letting y'all know. So I'm letting y'all know, letting y'all letting the world know. Right. So can't nobody say I didn't tell you. September twenty second <laughs> against Detroit, Philly. Go roll, get get some cheese steak, do some tailgating. You know what I mean? Get some roast pork with the bakla with the uh, uh, broccoli rob. I don't know. I'm looking for forward to the cheese steak with the cheese whiz on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go to Pat's, Gino's, John's roast pork. I don't gotta, care. I'm gotta get the crab fries too. You gotta get the crab fries too. Get the crab fries. But Bruh. they're not actually crab. It's not actually crab. Bro, I did this marathon. I deserve something. Like yeah. <laughs> like that. You, you go ahead and cheat. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and cheat. Yeah, you can go ahead and cheat. So I'm just saying. You just know, don't let Gina know. Uh, Gina be all right. All right. G- Gina did it with you too, right? Huh? Gina did it with you too, yeah, right? Yeah, she okay. did. So uh, still waiting on John Hughley uh, to call. I'm not sure what is going on. Uh, but, you know, if he doesn't call, it's all good. You know, we'll. We'll, we'll hook up another day and make it happen. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to, sh- to, to shout out Eli because I know I told him. I know I said we got to watch out for the twins. Nah, nah, I care. We good. We ain't got to worry about them. Oh, okay. I ain't worried. It's just man. Oh, it's just man. Huh? Yeah. What you going to say in, 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 in July when they still up? Oh, when they um bottom of the division? Yeah. Oh, okay. Bottom of the division? Or second place? No. Maybe maybe second place if the Indians can get their act together. Maybe. So let me ask you, what do you, what do you guys, what do you guys think about h- how much stock do you guys put in into John Dorsey and Freddie Kitchens going to Kareem Hunt's baptism? How much, how, how much stock do you put in? What does that say to you? I think they showing support. I, I don't see nothing wrong with no, it. I don't see nothing wrong with that. And Cleveland, can y'all stop acting like? Can, can people in this city stop acting like they perfect? Right. I know they. Are, I, you know I, I I actually went on that same board that you was can on you, Cleveland dot com. Yeah, act like you act like you perfect out here. Man, trying to change his everybody life. Around, make everybody, everybody make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes. And honestly, and I say, and I don't care who like it or who don't like it. I saw the video. It wasn't as bad as they made it out to be. People talking about he bru- he didn't brutalize that young lady. Now was he was he wrong? Absolutely, he was wrong. Mm, I'm not. I'm not denying that. Absolutely, he was wrong. Mm. But, you, but but to use the word brutalized, come right. on, son, stop. It's it. not a, like a Ray Rice situation no. or a Tyree uh, Tyreek Hill. This was a, this was a bunch of a, a bunch of drunk people having a fight in a hotel hallway. And he's young. You gonna make uh, when you're young, you gonna make, you're gonna make mistakes. mistakes. You gonna make mistakes. I think. I think. I think he understood. It seems like he was trying to turn his life around. I think. We get we jumped the gun too quick there. All this dude is trash. He's never gonna. Oh, what up, pop? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good pop. Um, no, I I think people make the mistake. Of, uh, um, uh, you you know what they say, man. Those who who, who who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, man. Y'all y'all need to stop. Everybody has done something at a young age. They said, man, I was an idiot for doing. That. I should have never done that. I've done some really stupid things in my 43 years on this planet. So have I. You know what I mean? Yeah, so have I. I've done some really dumb things, and I look back, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, why did I do that? I tell you, it's funny. I was on my way into work, and a song came on my um, a song came on my Apple Music. It was a Dr. Dre song. And now, you know, when that, when, when, when The Chronic came out, I was, that came out in 1992, I believe. When The Chronic came out, I was about 17 or 18 when The Chronic came out. That album from Dr. Dre. Classic I was album. still in kindergarten. Right. I was like 17 <laughs> or 18. And we used to go around blasting that. And there's a particular song on there, if you know that album. These Ain't S But Holes and Tricks. That's what the song is for. And we used to go around blasting that song and singing it and everything. But now I'm a father of two girls, <laughs> and I would never go around blasting that song. I might listen to it in my headphones. I can't find like the whole thing, but you know it is what it is. But I wouldn't go around playing that around my my daughters. Mm. 
I wouldn't be going around blasting that song, you know, with the windows rolled down like I did back in the day. Just out there on the street, windows rolled down, song blasting. And just ain't, eh, but I was in I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, just blasting the whole song. Didn't care. Right. But I matured. I grew. I'm a young, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an older man now. I'm, a, I'm mature. I'm not that 18 year old kid that I was back then. And artists grow from their music. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Snoop yeah. or Dre would do a song like that now. No, Snoop is yeah right exactly. <laughs> man, Snoop on another. He with Martha Stewart. Bro. <laughs> like, yeah, man, he he on another. Here's the thing, yeah. but but it, but that's that but that's growth. Yeah. We all know. Look, man. We we all know Snoop is good in the streets. We know that. Yeah. No doubt. Snoop is good in the streets. We see. See, here's the thing. Snoop is at the point where he doesn't have to prove. Anything Nothing. to the streets anymore. The streets already know Snoop. We, we know Snoop's resume. Certified. Certified. We already know that. So he doesn't have to do that. And you're right. He's at a point now where he, he, he can still he still get love from the streets, but he can still do a show with Martha Stewart. Right. Mm-hmm. Ice Cube, same thing. Ice Cube, Ice same, Cube way. same way. We know Ice Cube's resume. Nobody's going to question Ice Cube's resume. We already know what it is. But Ice Cube can do Are We There Yet? And, and uh, what was the, the movie... The fight or something like that. What was the movie where he was a teacher and they was they were fighting in the oh in fist fight fist fight. He can do those kind of movies, but in 1989 he was saying f the police, and I'm sure he still probably he might still feel that way, but he don't have to make songs like that anymore if he don't want to. I don't know. He did make <laughs> arrest the president. <laughs> yeah, me too. America's most wanted. Spelled America with the three K's. America's most wanted, which is a classic album, by the way. If you never heard it, you need to hear it. It's a classic. Have you heard that album in your life? Yeah. Okay. Classic. But what I'm saying is people grow. People mature. Kareem Hunt now has the opportunity. Look, I, I, I think Kareem Hunt understands. Look, man, it's sink or swim time, bro. This might be this might be it. This because, is it. Yeah. Because they don't look too too kindly on domestic violence on the national football. At all. You got off light. They didn't Ray Rice you. You got off right. You got off light. And John Dorsey's taking a chance on you. So your job now is to go ahead and sit out these eight games. Don't 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 make the mistake that that um Zeke Elliott did. And try to appeal. Zeke Elliott caught to me, Zeke Elliott cost the Cowboys a play a playoff a playoff spot by appealing that set that six game suspension. Because when he got suspended, he got suspended in the meat of the season. Mm-hmm. And we saw what Dak Prescott did without Zeke Elliott. And it cost the Cowboys big time. He could have taken out that six game suspension, sat the first six game of the season, and then came back and they would they could have went on a run. Uh, to me, Zeke Elliott cost the Cowboys a playoff spot. My advice to Cream Hunt, stay your ass at home, play some Madden, chill at your mama's right, house. You know. Here's the thing. Stay out of the light. I will even I'll even I I'll, I'll even dial it down just to back from, uh, a little bit from that. Go out and have fun. Cause you can't live your life holed up in the house. Mm-hmm. Go out and have fun. Number one, get better people around you. There you go. Yeah, that's that's first and foremost. Shorten your circle, man. Get people that you really, people that you know, are there for your best interest. Not yes men and hangers on. That's the and there you go. Thing you do Guys is not afraid to say no, Kareem. Yep. It's time to go home. Kareem, you wilding right we, now. We we about to go. We about to go. I'll snatch you up and get you up out of there. Yep. Have better people around you. People that knew you before you made it big. People that knew you when you was at Willoughby South High School that you trusted. Okay, get those people around you. Get them in your circle. All these comers, these, these Johnny come latelys and these hangers on, get them out of there, man. That's the worst thing you could do as a professional athlete or any kind of entertainer is keep those same leeches and hangers on around you because they don't care about you. They're trying to get paid. Get rid of those people first. Tighten your circle up. Go out and have fun. But you got to know when to walk away. It's documented many times, people out in public at, trying to test Charles Barkley because they knew Charles Barkley had a fuse that was like that. If I believe, if I believe right, the guy that got thrown through the plate glass window was out there was trying to test Charles Barkley because they knew Chuck wasn't having it. You get yourself in trouble like that, man. Don't th- there are people out there who will walk up to the biggest, baddest pro athlete they can find and start some mess with them. And especially nowadays, 
they did they did it to Barkley back in the days where there were no cell phones with cameras. We might not know about the incident until two days later. Now everything is instant and you can record that and put it on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and all that. You can send it to TMZ in an instant. You can send it to your local news station in an instant. And you know what's going to happen? TMZ and your local news station will pay you for that video. In this day and age, it's easy to go out there and try to trap an athlete. Yo, yo. Is that J.J. Watt right there? Watch this. I'm going to go up there and start something with him. Now, when he get mad and start coming at me, I start filming. It's easy to get to get trapped if you're a professional athlete. Kareem Hunt got to know when to walk away. And say, nah, you know what? Uh, this ain't for me, man. Look, we, we got to go. But that, but to your point, Reg, he needs somebody around and say, look, man, Kareem, you son, you wilding right now. We go, we out. We ain't doing this. We're not doing this. Okay? I, I knew you from way back when. I'm, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Right yeah. now, you in, you wrong. Yeah. Now, when you're out in public, I got you. But once we get in private, yo, Kareem, you, wow, you wrong for that, son. Mm-hmm. You wrong for that. He needs people around him that will tell him that. Because if not, he's going to fail. He's going to fail. Because in the incident, it was plenty of dudes that was right there that could have easily grabbed Kareem and got him back inside the they hotel They tried to fight with him. Yeah. <laughs> on Grab camera. Him, yeah. Grab him, pull him in that hotel room, shut that door, and let that girl sit out in the hallway, rant and rave, and do whatever yeah, she wanted to do. There you go. We got on camera. We, he didn't do a thing. He didn't do a thing. He didn't lay a hand on her. Need better people in your circle, man. And that that goes for honestly. And I'm and I and look, I'm only saying names because I see the exposure that some of these young men are getting now. Young men like John Hughley. The kid Michi at Garfield. Get better people in your circle. Get people that you can trust. Get people that you know will keep it 100 with you that will tell you no. Not Michi. Nah, that ain't cool, man. No. Nah. And I'm not saying he does anything like that. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just playing a hypothetical, trying to give an example. So don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that Michi or John doesn't do anything like that. Because frankly, I don't, I don't know them like that to know what they do in their personal life. I'm just giving an example because those are the two kids that I, two young men that I know that are, are out there really getting exposure. And you've got colleges and everybody looking at them. And you know what I mean? Like people want these, they want them to come play for their schools. And so, and I don't know what comes with that. A lot of perks, quote unquote, a lot of rewards that come with that. People trying to give you this, give you stuff, stuff that you can't have, stuff that you can't have. Mm-hmm. Get better people in your circle, first and foremost. Because when you need, because you, everybody, all of us, us included, I'm glad I got people in my cell telling me, Kev, you, you wild, Kev, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? I got people in my circle that would tell me that. Kev, that was foul, man. You, you know what I mean? Like, I got people like that in my circle. You need people like that to keep you balanced. Definitely. When he was here, his first day in Cleveland, LeBron James didn't have that. LeBron James didn't have people that would tell him, no, nah, LeBron, that, no. Somebody should have came to LeBron and said, LeBron, you know what? Man, listen, this whole decision thing, nah, that's not a good look, bro. That's, it's, it's not, let me tell you, it's not going to end well. We shouldn't do it. And they probably told him, told him after the fact. But then it's too late. Right, yeah. That's it's too what late I'm saying. then. And it's too late. So I need to tell him before, like LeBron, you know, it's probably not a good idea to go on national television and basically – take a big dump on Cleveland in front of the whole world. It's probably not the best thing to do. Let's just keep it quiet. Let's release a press statement. If we want, we can have, we can have a, we can have a press conference. When we get to Miami, we can have a press conference at that point. We don't need to do this. Somebody in this circle should have told him that. His whole circle failed him at that point. And as far as I know, that includes his mama and all them too. Cause no, I guess as far as I know, nobody told him not to do that. They were all looking at the capitalization. All looking, at, all looking at, the, at at getting 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 something off of it, but somebody should be like, "Nah, LeBron, that's probably not the best move to make." Peak. I'm sure Kareem Hunt have people in the circle that are afraid to tell him no. 
because they think if they tell him no, he's going to kick him out the circle and they're not going to get the perks. They're not going to stay in a nice hotel. He's not going to break them off a little chunk of money or whatever the case might be. But I think if he keeps his head on straight, sit out these eight games, he could come back and really help the Browns make a run that second half of the season. Definitely. Especially Absolutely. when we sitting somewhere like six and two, five and three, anywhere mm-hmm. like that when he come back. Yep. He definitely can come back yep. and help us. And he'll be fresh. He'll be fresh. At, at a time where most defenses are starting to kind of wear down because of the grind of season at the halfway point, there is no – all-star break in the middle of the season to, to get yourself right again. All you get is that bye week. Most of the bye weeks are most of the bye weeks are done by by week eight. Yeah. Some teams have that late bye. But I think after like week nine, ten, eleven, most of the bye weeks are over with. And as defenses are wearing down, Kareem Hunt will be fresh. Mm-hmm. Cause really he hasn't played since what, the middle of last season? He should be super fresh right now. Come get Nick Chubb a, a breather. Yeah. So, I I, I like it. I like here it 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 honestly feels like the Cleveland Browns front office is someplace they've never been since they've been back, which is one two steps ahead of things. They've never been to that point where they're actually ahead of the game. Leadership. Leadership wise. Leadership has never been ahead of the game. They've always been three, four steps behind everything and behind everybody. Dorsey and Kitchens, it seems, are ahead of the game. Let's go out here. Let's show our support for our our player. Mm -hmm. Let's show him that we believe in him and that we want him to get right. Let's go out here and, and, and make these moves with these players. Let's go out here. Yeah, let's get, let's get somebody like Odell who, is, who has shown some questionable character issues in the past, just at least on the, at least on the sidelines, attacking the kickers and, that and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? Let's go get him. Michael Irvin wasn't a, wasn't a, a saint. No. Nah. You got to love his passion. T.O. wasn't a saint. But you got to learn the channel with a yeah. little better. Yep. You got to love the passion, though. Yeah, to an extent, to an extent, as, as right you said, as long as he can channel it in the right in the right way. Yeah. But once that passion starts getting out of control, it starts to become a distraction. That's not what you really want. You know what I'm saying? So, I I, I think Kareem Hunt is in a great situation. I, I think. I really think he was in a good situation with. Um. In Kansas City. He was. I think he's in a good situation. He was. Andy Reid's not a coach that's going to sit by and let, um, you know, let players just do whatever they want to do. Andy Reid's not that coach. And the, the Chiefs GM, the Chiefs front office has been competent for a long time. So we'll see. We'll see on Kareem Hunt. All right, let's let's take one more break. We'll 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 go. We'll come back. Uh, hopefully, John Hughley will call in. If not, we'll catch him another day. But let's go ahead and we'll take a break, and then we'll come back and we'll run for a little bit longer. Give John a little bit long, a little bit more time to come through. And if not, uh, then you know we'll we'll catch him another week. So uh, Eli, take us out. Name the song. Uh, the name of the song is called Blue Sky by Bird Beats. This is the Quad Brothers Sports Show on One Unit Media Network. Yep. The Quad.
show. Give a little more time for John Hughley to call in. If not, again, like I said, we'll catch him another day. No worries. It's all good. So I'm looking at uh, this this um, article here that I saw on ESPN. Pretty interesting about teams who are or are not locked into their quarterbacks. And they're bringing up some of these contracts and uh, some of these deals that these players have signed. And you realize that there are some teams who really are kind of like locked in to their uh, their, their QB, starting with uh, Matt Ryan um, in Atlanta, signed through 2023. Mm. Uh, Matt Ryan is um, five-year, $150 million deal he signed in May of 2018. $94.5 million guaranteed at signing. To me, The only other quarterback who has underachieved, I guess, on, who's on that list of underachieving quarterbacks behind Matt Stafford is Matt Ryan. Agreed. I agree with that. Do you under, Do you realize Matthew Stafford hasn't even won a division in Detroit? That is crazy. What did I say about Matt Stafford? He's a stat stuffer. That's he it. is. If I, I, and I've said before too, if you want your quarterback to throw for four thousand yards, Matthew Stafford is your guy. If you want him to win a division, don't get Matthew Stafford. That t- he hasn't even won a division in Detroit. He's been there since after they after they went on sixteen. Is when Matt Stafford got there? That was what two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah, he won a division. Second on the list of teams kind of locked into their quarterbacks. Seattle just signed Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson to an extension. Uh, through 2023, four-year, $140 million extension, $70 million guaranteed. That's a great investment. I know. I don't know why people were mad at that. I I think people are selling Russell Wilson short. I really do. Russell Wilson is a top-ten quarterback in this league. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. You can really make the argument for top five. Yeah, you, you can, you can I, make I the argument. I won't be mad at it. I won't yeah, be me, mad me at either. It. Me either. Third on the list, you already know who it is, King Aaron the 12th, Aaron Rodgers. Signed through 2023, four-year, $134 million extension signed in August 2018. Another great investment. Yep, $78.7 million guaranteed mm. to sign. Get that man some weapons, E, mm. while you un over there. Get that man, get that man <laughs> something to work right. with. Exactly. Who's, I mean, I mean Devontae I, Adams that's is it. okay. That's, that's all you have It's Devontae yeah. Adams. Outside of Devontae Adams, what do you have in Green Bay? Mm-hmm. Has he ever had a stud running back in his whole tenure there no. in Green Bay? No, no. Exactly. Eddie Lacy. Oh my God, that's it. <laughs> oh my God, that's you it, know, right? Well, you know where Eddie Lacy is? Probably Montgomery, mm-hmm. a converted receiver to running back. Exactly. Running back wearing number eighty-eight. What? <laughs> uh, the fourth team on the list of teams that are locked in. The guy we just talked about, Nick Foles, signed through twenty twenty-two, four years, eighty-eight million dollar deal. I'm just curious about. I'm just curious, you know, this season about Nick Foles and how he's going to do well, in, you know, in um, Jacksonville. I hope Nick Foles does I hope, well. I, hope I he really does do. Too. Listen, man, I I am pulling for Nick Foles. I hope Nick Foles does well, unless he plays the Philadelphia Eagles, and I but, want Nick Foles to basically get crushed. But you also miss him, though. You're gonna miss him because <laughs> you look no. at the backup. You look at your backup situation now. You got Cody Kessler and um, Nate what Subfield. Nate Subfield. Listen to Subfield. me. Here's all I'm going to say. Howie likes Nate Sudfield, Nate, Nate Sudfeld, and I trust Howie Roseman. I have no reason, as a fan of the Eagles, I have no reason to not trust Howie Roseman as a GM. He's made some brilliant moves. So, hey, if Howie likes him, if Howie likes it, I love it. Um, but Nick Foles, look, and he's up there in age. Slated to make, how's it, he's going to make, um, Okay, so he's got fully guaranteed salaries of five million this coming season. Then it jumps to fifteen point one two five million in twenty twenty. That's an iffy signing, but anything better than Blake Bortles. Anything better than Blake Bortles. <laughs> Facts all day. <laughs> After that, here's a guy. Here's a guy who's third on that underachieving and almost overrated list. Kirk Cousins. Oh, oh my God! Now he's only signed through twenty twenty. 
But he signed a three-year, $84 million contract. Guaranteed. Fully guaranteed. I'm so happy we dodged that bullet. Man, I was on the Kirk Cousins listen. bandwagon, too. I'll be the first sure to admit was. it. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit I was on the Kirk Cousins bandwagon. Now, here's an interesting one next on the list. Kyler Murray at number six with the Arizona Cardinals. Four years, $35.159 million contract. This is also well, fully that's guaranteed. Yeah, that's a, on a rookie um, deal. Fully though. guaranteed contract. We, we, I think we got to wait to see about two to be continued. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, then another guy we just talked about, Matthew Stafford. Signed through 2022. Five-year, $135 million extension. Signed in August 2017. $60.5 million guarantee when he signed that. He got to show up. If they cut him this year, it will cost them $26 million against their salary cap. Wow. Trading him will cost them $20 million against their salary cap. Now, after 2020, he'd only bring a $10 million cap hit. After that 2020 season, if he doesn't produce and, and at least get the, the Lions to a division and, and, uh, and, and a playoff appearance, I, I, if I'm the Lions, I'm like, look, man, we, we've tried this for a long time. Because he's about 30 working. now, ain't he? Yeah. yeah, it's not working, bro. You got to do something. It's not working. Uh, Next up on that list. Ben Roethlisberger signed through 2021, two years, $68 million extension signed just last month. This will be officially his last contract. That, that was a yeah. that, that was a loyalty deal, yeah. loyalty contract. Yeah. yeah. Listen to me. He's 37. I didn't know this. He had 5,000 yards passing last season. Yeah. At, at 37. Still producing. Mm. But he had a lot of picks too, though. He did have a lot of picks. Okay. Telling yourself it that. Is this year, though. Keep telling yourself that. That was a loyalty deal. Look though. who's it not was. on the list. Baker Mayfield. Four year, thirty two point six eight three million dollar fully guaranteed contract signed July last year. Twenty one point eight five million dollar signing bonus and a team option for the fifth year in twenty twenty two. When they re up on him, they're gonna have to pay him though. Mm-hmm. If oh. if he produces. Hopefully they keep the band together because Jarvis, he's out. He, his contract is up in two more years. He signed a four-year deal too, right? Yeah. I'm looking at some of these players on here, and I'm I'm looking and like they're ranking these players who are. And and I'm and I'm looking for one person in particular. I'm looking for Carson Wentz, um, and I'm looking to see what grade they gave him. And. So, yeah, it's basically said there that the Eagles are on the verge of commitment. So, like I said, Carson Wentz is one of those quarterbacks that's got to show and prove. You got to show and prove that you can make it happen. Lamar Jackson is on, is, is 20. Now, they ranked all of them, but Lamar Jackson is 24th on this list. So, and what they're, what I think the Ravens are planning on doing with Lamar Jackson is, 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 it's like what they say in in this article. They're gonna build, they're gonna build a, a, a speed based run first offense around him and his skill set. And I'm just telling you, please don't make the mistake of thinking these young boy can't produce. Don't, don't do that. What? Lamar Jackson. Okay, uh, but that, not, okay. Uh, yeah, yes, he he can produce, but there's gonna be teams that's gonna adjust to that. I mean, everybody's going to find out what they're doing in Baltimore. They, every team is going to adjust to that. Okay, well, you could you could adjust it. I mean, you can stop it. Okay. I'm just saying the young the young boy is, is very talented in they, my you opinion. Know, he, they, they, he better learn how to slide. He did, he does need to learn, learn how to slide, but he showed in, in, in college he was accurate. He's one of the most accurate quarterbacks in passing in college, so I'm not sure. See, that's where these labels get thrown out. He's not accurate. He's one of the most accurate QBs in college. Of course he's accurate, but but he's gonna have to come in. He's and and he'll and he'll he'll you know if they do it right he'll take another step forward next season. And the Baltimore Ravens could have a very dynamic offense with him. And that AFC North might be something special to see this year. It might really be a a a, a slugfest. So I just thought that was that was kind of interesting, um, with to see some of these quarterbacks that are on this list, who basically are are in put up or shut up mode. And again, my quarterback is right there in in the mix of that. Uh, third quarter update: Toronto over Milwaukee, sixty five to fifty nine at mm. the moment. So Toronto trying to show improving. 
uh, get back into the series. If they lose this one, man, it's it's a it's a it's sweet. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. So real quick before we before we get out of here, it doesn't look like John's gonna call. So we'll, we'll catch John another day. I just want to look at some of these quarterbacks that are coming on next year. Some of these players that are coming on next year uh, that are on uh, Mel Kuyper's big board already. Guys like Justin Herbert, who could have came out this year and been a, been a first round pick. Um, Tua uh, Tagoviola, Jake Fromm in Georgia. I think Jake Fromm is probably going to be the best quarterback to come out next year if he has another season like he did this year. Even though, even better than Tua. Um, they might not have another Heisman in Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Cats like I like I like that Zach Moss kid, man, at Utah, the running back. Mm-hmm. I like that kid, man. I really do. Um, so there's some. I mean, I'm just looking at the big board. There's some really good. Some interesting prospects. I don't want to go through over the whole board, but I just saw some names that kind of stuck out to me. Um, Jacob Eason at Washington. Wait, he was a Georgia transfer. I believe so. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yep, yep. So, um, Nate Stanley, too, at Iowa. Another quarterback who could it's, – it's intriguing. It's intriguing. So, we'll see, man. It, I mean, it's too early to talk draft. And, honestly, for the Browns and for my team, for any team, it's too early to be talking draft. We don't need to talk draft right now. You know, we can get into that if somebody get hurt in the off <laughs> in the off season. We'll see. All right, man. So look, uh, we're gonna go ahead. Right, that's gonna do it for us. Shorten the show a little bit tonight. Um, we appreciate everybody who tuned in and listened. Um, we'll catch John Hughley another day. Um, you know, something happened. He wasn't able to call in. It's all good. Uh, we'll catch John Hughley another day and have more. We'll talk to him uh, at that point. So, um, all right, man. That's it. Uh, we're gonna get out of here. Uh, thank you to everybody who listened. Uh, Phil, get better. My name is Kevin Hanley for Eli Robinson for Reggie Logan. This is the Choir Brothers Sports Show. Again, we'll catch John Hughley another time. Uh, Eli, go ahead and take us out. All right, the name of the song is called Bankroll by KM Beats. This is the Choir Brothers Sports Show on One Unit Media Network. The Quad. See you next week. Peace. Peace.